Hello and welcome to the Telegraph Studio and Business Reporters Financial Education Campaign, hosted by The Telegraph Online. I'm Alistair Greener. Now, do you remember the flood of promotions about ISAs last April, where banks tried to persuade us to put £15,000 on an ISA account and earn a modest yield? Well, this truly modest yield was better than any other interest rate we could earn from our cash held on different accounts. But with the base rate hitting rock bottom, we're looking for better solutions to make our money work for us. And that's what we're talking about today with Adrian Lowcock from Arcatas. Good morning. Good morning. So we've just come out of a financial crisis, so it seems a pretty tricky time and risky time to make investments. So who's actually taking that risk? Well, I think we should have to consider the situation and perhaps flip the question on its head and say who, who can afford not to take that risk. We're in a situation where you're just not getting any return on cash. Interest rates have fallen further um, and people who have got money in cash are going to have to save a lot more if they want to have, have money in retirement or to, to, to be able to buy things. It just takes so much longer now. So actually, so who can afford to invest in this climate? So how much money should I have before I can start investing? I mean, is there a minimum? Uh, roughly, it's about £50. You can actually invest £50 a month. Um, uh, so investing is for anyone. But I would suggest, you know, it's investing what you can afford to save. And that's the first thing. And then it's uh, also sort of looking at what are you trying to achieve? Because £50 a month may be enough, but it might not be enough to actually achieve what you're looking to do with your investing. So think about what, you, what you're trying to buy or what you're saving for and work backwards to see how much you actually need to save. OK, so let's say I have a modest amount, say, £50, but I am willing to invest it. How do I start that process? So the first thing you need to do is think about your goal, what do you want to achieve. Uh, decide what that is, and then that, that sets you sort of uh, an objective to achieve. Then it's really thinking about um, how you're going to achieve that, because um, you want safety and you want control over your investments. One of the key things to do that is, is look at to be diversified, so spreading it across a lot of assets and having multiple investments across a lot of assets. And then thirdly, it's about knowing yourself. What do you mean by knowing yourself? So what I mean there is really understanding uh, your app attitude and appetites and how much you want to be engaged in investing. So for some people, uh, they'd be quite happy taking very little involvement in it and they wouldn't perhaps take any risk at all and uh, they invest in a very safe, solid, dependable product. But at the end of it, they might not have achieved their goals because it hasn't grown enough. Other people might be on the other side of it and happy to take lots of risk. Investments go up and down all the time and they're very volatile, but the potential for greater returns is there. Now, most of us will sit somewhere in the middle of that range, but it's really understanding what you are comfortable with and what you can sleep at night with. You also said earlier on about be diversified. I mean, what's that good for? Uh, so diversification is basically spreading your investments across a, across a multiple range of assets, so having a multi-asset investment um, and holding different assets because they all perform differently at different times. So gold does well at certain points, shares do well at other times, and then there are things like bonds and properties which all do well. And by having this sort of mix of investments, you effectively reduce the overall volatility. It's, 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 a, you know, it's the opposite of betting on black and hoping it comes up or buying a lottery ticket and hoping you win. This is about spreading it off and getting little victories, if you like each time and that way you, you sort of grow slowly and you, you, look, you aim to sort of get rich slowly if you like as opposed to trying to get rich quick. Now taking this multi-asset portfolio that you were talking about there you said yourself there's so many different variables in there from shares to property to a multitude of different things so therefore you're going to need some really really good advice so how do you go about getting this multi-asset fund manager to help you? So the first thing you need to do, well, why would you use a multi-asset fund manager, I think? And you've got to look at that. And actually, one of the reasons is, is they have the time. They, they, they spend their working life in looking at investments. They therefore have also the expertise at doing it. Um, and by doing it, they can also um, uh, effectively reduce cost as well, because they can invest on your behalf and a lot of other clients' behalf. So they can get it more cost effective. So, so it's a real good way of actually doing it, because you can get a better access, better expertise and doing it. And then you've got to look at, well, who are the good managers? There's a lot of choice out there. There's a lot of choice in the multi-asset range as well. And what you're really looking for is somebody who is um, sort of very conscious conscientious is the way I'd put it. They're not going to promise the world um, and make false promises and not deliver. They're going to be very sensible and very uh, uh, cautious with investing your money. So whilst they take risk, they don't want to be risk losing that money and they're really looking to try and protect 
capital on the downside, so they don't want you to lose it, and they don't they don't sort of make unnecessary investments, if you like. And they've got a very good understanding of, of what's going on in the world. And then you look at performance. How are they actually done in the past? It's it's not a guide to the future, but it is a good indicator of how they've behaved in different climates and in different environments. One thing we certainly know from recent events, and you actually said it yourself earlier on, that markets are very volatile. So how can you guarantee that my portfolio actually responds to that volatility and any other changes? So as with life, there's no guarantee with investments, um, but it's our job to look out for those pitfalls that may come across and, and, and be unforeseen and the ones that we can predict, we can prepare for. But what we do is we basically sort of always fine tuning the portfolio, always making changes and always Always investing in the different assets so that it, it can adapt and uh, change for the environment and suit that environment. Now it's clear that we all need to make these investments but there's a lot of people out there who will claim to be able to look after us. So what is it that Architas brings to the table? So I think there are a couple of key things that we bring to the table. The first is that we can buy the best fund in the best place. So if we're looking for a property fund, we can buy the best property fund available. If we're looking for a, a global equity fund, we can buy the best global equity fund that is available. We're not restricted by anything. And I think secondly, we also are able to create portfolios that uh, suit a wide range of investors. So some investors want an active manager, somebody who can pick the funds and try and beat an index. But that tends to cost a little bit more. Well, while other investors prefer the passive approach where you pay a lower cost but you just track an index and then we actually also offer a, a mix, a blend of the two and that's quite um, rare in the UK, not too many people do that and I think that, that's something that, that, that we add value on. Well you've certainly shown us that we need to invest and given us a lot to think about when it comes to making those investments. Adrian Locock from Architas, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. <laughs>